Hey guys, I'm Jonas. Today I'm going to show you how to service your Hydra Gear ZT Series Hydrostats. Now this procedure that I'm going to show you is going to be exactly the same no matter what make or model your mower is. This will work on the Hydra Gear ZT 2800, the 3100, 3400, all the way up to the 3800 Series Hydrostat. You're going to be doing this exact same thing. Now to do this service, I recommend using Hydra Gear's service kit. They have one kit that comes with everything that you need to be able to complete this service. This comes with two oil filters and five quarts of oil. Now there's also going to be a pump and a couple of fittings included in this kit as well. Now those are to be used if your hydrostats don't have an external oil reservoir that you can fill up with oil. Those are to use if you have to pump the oil back into the hydrostat through the air bleeder bolts. Now I'm fortunate enough to have an air lift table so I can get these machines up in the air where it's a little bit easier for me to work on them. But you can do this exact same procedure on the ground. The first thing that you want to do is jack up the back end of the mower. Now I just jack it up as high as I can, put a couple of jack stands underneath of there, and then I go ahead and remove both rear tires. Now you can do this procedure without removing the rear tires from the machine, but it only takes a minute or two to take those tires off and it gives you a lot better access to be able to get into those oil filters to get your old one spun off and the new one spun back on. Now once you've got your machine up on jack stands and you've got the tires off of it, the next thing that I want you to do is make sure that you can break loose the air bleeder bolt. Now the air bleeder screw is on the inside of the hydrostat, so where your belt is running from your clutch up towards the deck, your air bleeder screw is going to be right there by your belt. Now some of the newer ones use like a 1316 socket, some of the older ones use Allen heads, I've seen ones that take a 3 8 Allen head, this particular machine takes a quarter inch Allen head. But those bolts from the factory are usually very tight, so I want to make sure that you can get that bolt broke loose before you go ahead and drain all the oil out of your hydrostats, and then you can't drive your machine. So if something happens and you can't get that bolt out, and all the oil's out of your hydrostat, you're just stuck. You're going to be dragging it up on the trailer because you can't start it and drive it. Once you've got that air bleeder bolt broke loose, then you can go ahead and remove the two covers that are over top of the oil filters. These just use a 3 8 socket. Once you've got those covers off, you need to spend a little bit of time cleaning up around that oil filter before you remove it. Those oil filters are always completely packed with dirt and grass all the way around them. So if you've got an air hose, blow off around that oil filter really good and then spin it loose just like a quarter of a turn and blow off a little bit more anything that broke loose before you go ahead and completely remove that oil filter. Now as soon as you start spinning that oil filter off, you're going to have about two quarts of oil that just come gushing out of there very quickly. So you need to make sure that you have your oil pan ready underneath to catch that oil that's going to come running out of there. Once all the oil is completely drained out of your hydrostats, go ahead and clean up that surface area before you spin your new oil filter on. You want to make sure that it's got good contact and you're not going to have any leaks. On your new oil filter, you want to put a coat of clean engine oil around that O-ring before you spin your new filter on. Then just spin your new filter on and tighten by hand only. Now you can reinstall the two plastic covers that cover that oil filter. Now after removing your air bleeder bolt, you can go ahead and start dumping fresh oil into your hydrostat reservoir. Now some machines will use two separate reservoirs, one going to each hydrostat, other machines will just use one reservoir that has two lines coming off the bottom of it, one going to each side. Just keep adding oil into those reservoirs until you see it start to run out of your air bleeder screw on the inside of the hydrostat. As soon as you see oil start running out of that bleeder bolt, go ahead and put the bolt back in there and tighten it down. But when you're done, you should have around four to four and a half quarts of oil dumped back into the system. Now after we've got both air bleeder bolts back in and tightened down, I like to leave the oil reservoir about halfway full with oil until after we go through our purge procedure and we went out and mowed with it one time. So now that we've got our fresh oil in the system, I went ahead and cleaned everything up really good and I put the tires and wheels back on, but I've still got the back end up on the jack stands. Now we're ready to do the last part of this procedure. 
And this is called the air purge procedure. So what we're gonna try to do is purge any air that is left in those hydrostats out. You don't want any air inside of there or it's gonna cause excessive wear and tear on those hydrostats. To do the purge procedure, all we need to do is disengage the hydrostats. So all of these hydrostats are gonna have some sort of a lever or a knob that you're gonna pull or flip to disengage the hydrostat. So like if you needed to push the machine while it wasn't running, it would have a disengagement lever. So we need to disengage those hydrostats and then start the engine and stroke the levers forwards and backwards slowly five to six times. Then we're gonna shut the engine off, re-engage those hydrostats, start the engine again, stroke the lever five to six times slowly back and forth. And we're gonna repeat that process two to three times, engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged, until we, we quit hearing any kind of a whine or excessive noise coming from those hydrostats. Once it seems like your tires are spinning smoothly and you don't hear any excessive noise, then you know that you should have all the air purged out of that system. While you're doing that purge procedure, you do need to keep an eye on your oil reservoir to make sure that you can still see oil in that reservoir. Once you're done with that purge procedure, go ahead and take the machine back down off the jack stands, go drive it around, make sure everything feels good. Now that everything seems to be in good operating condition, I like to go out and mow with it for about 30 minutes, get those hydros good and hot, and then bring the machine back in and let it cool down completely, even overnight. Then come back the next day and check our oil level in the hydrostat and make sure that if it has a full cold line on the side of your reservoir that that oil level is at least up to that line. If it doesn't have any line on the side of the reservoir, you want the reservoir to be about a third of the way full. You're also going to want to take a look underneath the machine and make sure that you don't have any leaks anywhere. Now I recommend doing your break-in oil change around 75 hours and then every three years or 200 hours after that. Well that's going to wrap it up for today guys. If you got some good value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.